Today we have the 2021 Honda Accord Touring Hybrid model, so it's super efficient, it's very spacious and practical to top it off. It is slightly revised and refreshed for this year, which I'll talk about a couple of those things, but we're gonna take a full look at the outside, the inside, and take it for a test drive and see just how well this Hybrid Accord does. Hey, real quick, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Nolan, I do videos like this every single week, so if you wanna see more, be sure to subscribe down below. But also, if you're interested in lower trim level Accords or non-hybrid model Accords, I've got a few videos in the description below where you can check those out. But let's go ahead and jump into this one. Now I wanna start things off under the hood because that's where things really differ on the hybrid models. Like I said, if you wanna see the regular models, I've got a video in the description below talking about those engines. But with the hybrid, you're gonna get a few different components. So first, under the hood, we've got this port injected two liter four cylinder engine paired with an electric motor, and then you have a lithium ion battery. Altogether, that's gonna give you 212 horsepower and 232 pound-feet of torque, paired with an electronically controlled CVT. It's not the same kind of CVT, the mechanical CVT that you find in the regular Accord. It drives quite a bit different, and we'll talk about that in the test drive. And miles per gallon suffers a little bit on this touring model, down to 44 in the city, but you can get 48 miles per gallon across the board with the lower trims on this hybrid. And with a gas tank that's almost 13 gallons, you can get over 600 miles of range. All right, let's take a look at these exterior details, and it is a little bit revised for 2021. It's still gonna be very similar. And the trim levels for the hybrid are just a little different. It starts with the base hybrid EX, EXL, and Touring. This is the Touring model that we have right here, and it's a little different because we still get the EX on the hybrid, but the regular gas does not get the EX trim level anymore. So right up front, this is where some of the revision is. The grille is a little bit wider, it's restyled. You can see that looks a little different. Even the fog light housings are different. They're more like cubes instead of the horizontal lines that they were to reflect the upper headlights. But LED headlights are standard across the board. The base model is gonna give you halogen high beams, but the rest of them will give you full LED high and low beams. And then the LED fog lights down here are on everything but the base model as well for this hybrid. These headlights are actually revised as well. You can see, first of all, this is the same, but you still get the LED blinker, but now they're actually longer and wider with their illumination and they get a better headlight rating. And I've got a night video showing these off just how well they do. This paint color is Lunar Silver Metallic. I think it looks nice on the Accord. It's got a nice metallic-y sheen and it's paired with these 19 inch wheels on the Touring model. Some lower trims will give you 17 inch wheels, but the Touring gets these top dog 19 inch wheels. There's a couple different ways you'll know this is a hybrid. First of all, you've got a badge in the front, a badge in the back, and a blue logo, but the mirrors are gonna be body color on all trim levels. This turn signal is just on the EXL and higher, and then the EX trim level and up are gonna give you heated mirrors with the blind spot indicator in them. And the passenger mirror will actually reverse tilt down as well. You'll notice a little bit of chrome up above the windows and the Touring model actually gives you a little bit of chrome accent on top of those door handles as well. And dimensionally, this is 192.9 inches long, so it's still in the midsize class, but it has really good space on the inside of the car. Honda retains its fastback design with the fast sloping rear end and that one body line that comes all the way back into the taillight. And these are LED taillights with a regular bulb on the blinker. And like I said, I've got a night video showing those off. And then with the hybrid, it's a very subdued rear end, no, ex no exposed exhaust except one little tip down there. Now coming to the back, there's no power lift gate or anything like there is on Hyundai, but there's a little touch pad with your smart key where you can just pop the trunk open. And it does have some exposed hinges, so you do have to accommodate, the, accommodate for those, um, but it gives you a massive trunk. There's 16.7 cubic feet, and you don't sacrifice any space at all when you uh, get the hybrid. So this is the same as the gas, and I really like how it's got a couple of hooks. You can put grocery bags on there or cargo nets. There's one of those on each side, Plus you've got these tabs to fold the seats down to where you have a 40-60 split. 
and I can throw my stroller and some other junk back here, even a jogging stroller, and it fits and works just fine. So this trunk is massive. But one disappointing thing is that underneath of here, there's no spare tire on the hybrid. All you get is this tire inflator kit. There's nothing under here either, and there's really not a lot of space. So that's a bummer. Now let's look at this key fob for this Honda Accord. Very similar. It's pretty, pretty slim. It's got some decent bulk to it to where it doesn't feel too flimsy, but it fits into your pocket very well. You've got the smart key system standard on the hybrid. Even remote start is standard on the hybrid. And as long as you have the key fob with you, the way that it works is there's buttons on here or a couple lines to lock it. Otherwise, it's got a sensor in the back to open it. And it's got one cool feature. It had this before and the Civic has it too. But if you close the door, have the key fob with you and you walk away, just watch the mirror. It's gonna automatically lock, boom, on its own. But there's one more feature that I showed you with the Accord too. Press the lock button or the unlock button three times and hold it and then all the windows and the sunroof will open up. So this could be handy if it's really hot, you don't have remote start, you can just open the windows. Now let's take a look at these front seats. And these seats are comfortable in my opinion, and I'll talk more about that. So the base model, which is not what we have, is gonna give you just cloth manual seats. The EX trim level and up are gonna give you 12-way power seats, which includes four-way lumbar, so height, tilt, all the regular adjustments, and four-way lumbar, which is really nice. The leather that you see here is gonna be on the EXL and the Touring, and it's perforated here because we have ventilation on the Touring model. And then you've got a little bit of bolstering on the sides, a little bit of bolstering on the bottom. The headrest is not intrusive like it is on some cars, so I really love that. But let's go ahead and hop in. In terms of creature comforts, the e, in the US, the EX and up will give you heated seat standard. The ventil or the Touring gives you the ventilated seats. So if you want those, those are the trim levels you've got to get. And then you can get memory settings on the EXL and the Touring. It comes with the leather seats. And with that, when you turn the car on, it's gonna move your seat. You can have it programmed to move your seat closer or further back for an entry exit system. The two position memory seats are on the door. They're just for the driver, but they are nice. But one thing to know, if you have mobility issues, it's definitely pretty low to the ground. So getting in is not quite nearly as easy as it is in some crossovers. And this steering wheel is manual tilt and telescoping. It doesn't seem to have quite as much motion as I thought it would, especially with the telescoping, but I've been able to get it where I want it, no troubles. It's not a heated steering wheel. I thought that Honda used to have a heated steering wheel for the Accord as an accessory or something maybe, but we don't have a heated steering wheel on this one. Now let's look at the back seat, and this is a really spacious back seat. Real quick, you get the same kind of trim on the door as you do up front, but this is hard plastic, kind of expected, but it is the top trim, so soft armrest and a bottle holder. And then take a look at this, you get three tier heated seats in the back on this Touring model, just on the Touring model. But this is really good space overall. You still have perforated leather seats, which can get some junk in them. They're not ventilated back here like they are in the front, but the legroom is fantastic. And I can even have that car seat behind where I like to sit and it does not get in the way. I love that. So there's great space back here for car seats, families, and kids. And then sitting behind myself at five foot nine, I can really lounge out pretty well. Foot space, knee space, there's a couple of mat pockets in here. Then we've got USB ports back here as well, two of those, plus we've got air conditioning vents, which is also really nice to see. That's something you won't find in the Civic. Don't forget, we get this center folding armrest with some padding and some cup holders. The only drawback to this design with the fast sloping rear end is that headroom is not the best. My hair is touching, but my head's not pushing into the ceiling, but it's a little bit annoying the way it is. So I'm five foot nine. If you're any taller than me or about my height, it's a little bit annoying back here. Now hopping into the interior, this remains very similar to what we had. There's one big change up on the screen, which I'll show you in a little bit, but it's still very practical. It's minimalistic and it just works. So right in front of us, we've got a leather wrapped steering wheel. The leather is on the EXL and the Touring model, but it's not heated, at least in the US. So I'm a little bummed by that. You know, I just kind of talked about that, but it is very comfortable to hold on to. I like the grips here. The leather is nice and soft. Over on the door, you've got soft materials up here. You've got this extra trim and a soft armrest, even though it does get pretty small down here. All this material next to your arm is also soft, automatic, front to windows, memory settings on the door, 
Even your head-up display controls right there, trip computer, all the necessary buttons on the side are easy to get to. The door storage is pretty small. My bottle does not really fit in there. You got, definitely kind of got to squeeze it in, but it can work for some bottles. Now right up overhead is where you'll find the head-up display. There's a good amount of information you can change on there and put different things, or you can completely remove it if you want to. And you'll see on our steering wheel we have paddle shifters but those aren't really the same kind of paddle shifters that you're used to they can help with regenerative braking and i'll go through that in the test drive one nice feature is we've got rain sensing windshield wipers and then right in front of us you've got this display so you've got some digital aspects on the left and the right you've got your normal fuel gauge on the right and then your battery gauge on the left i like being able to see the state of the battery that right side, the speedometer, is totally analog and then it's digital from the left or from there to the left, including this entire left portion. So let me show you. You control this all with the steering wheel. There's a bunch of different information you can see. You can even change what audio source you're doing. There's a lot that you can see. It all has to be controlled with the steering wheel and it does take a little bit of time to get used to what's what, but bunches and bunches of information. You can even see when you're driving whether or not you're using engine power, battery power, or both, which can be helpful in learning how to be more efficient with this. And I've gotten very good efficiency in the time I've had this. Now moving over here, an eight inch screen is standard on every trim level. I'm a little bit surprised that it's not a larger screen, but it is the Etch-A-Sketch style with the two knobs down here. I like that we have a volume knob and a tuning knob and still have physical buttons up here to get to all of your shortcuts. This Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is actually wireless and we have a wireless charging pad. So check that out. I have a cord right here, but I'm not plugged into my phone. It's just automatically going wireless, which is really handy and really nice, especially if you want to charge your phone. For the hybrids, this wireless CarPlay is on the EX trim level and up, and same with that wireless charger. It's the same system as before, a little bit updated. It's, it's easy to use, but not as intuitive as, as some or as much customization as some. But you can even see the power flow on here too. So you can watch this periodically and just get better at being more efficient when you drive. One thing you won't find on the Accord is a 360 camera. Some competitors are starting to give you that now. Honda does give you a three-tiered backup camera to where you can look straight down, have a more narrow or a wider view, but it does give you dynamic lines, so it does help some. Dual zone climate control is standard here in this hybrid model. You've got your ventilated seats and heated seat controls, and these have a nice texture to them. They have nice feeling to them, a nice click as well, and I like how they turn blue or red if you're turning it up or down with the temperature. This can be closed. Otherwise, you have the wireless charging pad, a couple USB ports, and a 12 volt power outlet. Just like the gas accords with the two liter turbo, you've got this push button shifter. It takes just a bit of getting used to. And then you've got your drive mode. So eco mode, sport, and EV mode, which I'll go through in the test drive. Even electronic parking brake and brake hold. And with the cup holders, they're good size. I've had no trouble fitting anything in there. And this whole center console looks nicer than most that have just a pure piano black scratchy black plastic the armrest is not super soft but it's pretty wide for you and your passenger and then you've got a two-tiered storage area plus a 12 volt power outlet in there this little tray can be moved or slide forward and backwards honda also gives you a locking glove box that's decent size the top two trims are going to give you this automatic dimming review mirror with garage controls there's no led interior lighting i have a night review showing all that off but i'm glad you still get a sunglass holder the visors also slide out, which is good, instead of the little sliding piece. And then there's just a regular size moonroof in here. No panoramic roof available. And at night, there's a little bit of ambient lighting in this door handle. And there's just a little bit that comes from overhead. Let me turn the lights on. It comes right there. It's just a very gentle glow. There's no customizable colored ambient lighting or anything like that, but you do get a little bit. All right, y'all, let's get going on the test drive in this Accord Hybrid. So first of all, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the differences between this and the regular gas models. I'll try to give you a little more feedback on how this Accord is as a hybrid compared to some other vehicles as well and what's different about it. So I'm gonna actually reset trip computer B 
and we'll see what kind of miles per gallon we get in this test drive. We'll go through some of the drive modes and I'm gonna get on it sometimes, EV mode, sport mode, etc. So it's probably not gonna be great, but just for curiosity's sake, we'll see how it is. And my first impression of driving the Accord is that it just feels like a very well-balanced car in terms of handling, comfort, the ride, everything all together. So there's really not anything that you're sacrificing except one thing that I'll talk about later. But with this hybrid, it doesn't have a regular tachometer. When you get on the gas, it's got a charge meter or a power meter. So you're either charging the car or you're taking power away from the car. That's basically the way it goes. Sometimes when you're driving, it'll be just electric power and it will say EV down in that charge power meter. If the gas engine's on, it won't say EV. And sometimes you'll be able to tell when the gas engine turns on. So for example, I'm gonna let off the gas. EV mode just turned on, so that means the gas power is off but I started to accelerate and the gas turned on. And most of the time it's hardly noticeable, which is good. Sometimes you can tell a little bit when you get on it more, you can hear the gas engine quite a bit more, obviously. And that's gonna kill our efficiency here. But if you pay attention to that, or you have the power flow meter on there or on there, you can tell when you're using battery power or gas power or when you're recapturing energy because when you brake or just coast that's going to go into the charge meter and then you're going to recapture some energy with regeneration from the brakes and i'll use these paddle shifters a little bit later too and tell you how those work because you can actually use those to help charge up the battery a little bit without actually using your brakes but the handling feel of this is good it's just typical honda it handles well it feels more fun than you would expect, especially for a hybrid. And if you get in the gas Accords, especially that two liter turbo, that thing is zippy. I mean, that thing moves, it gets going, it handles well, it's just flat around corners and it just does a great overall job. Now we've just kind of been cruising along. We're getting about 42.6 miles per gallon and this average is 44 city, 41 on the highway. I'll put it in sport mode in a little bit and I'll put it in EV mode a little bit later too. But one thing to note, when I come up here, I'm gonna slow down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the paddles and there's different levels. So the left paddle is to brake and regenerate. I haven't touched the brake yet. It's slowing me down. Now I'm touching the brake. But it starts to slow me down almost as if you're partially braking and it helps to regenerate battery power. So you capture some energy as you brake, and that's one reason that you get better efficiency in the city. And then you can use this one to reduce how much regeneration you have. So this one, the left one, you increase it, and the right one, you decrease it. It's not like typical gear shifting. I'm still in EV mode right now, and the gas engine just turned on. Now, I'm gonna put it in sport mode. Sport mode button down there. It's gonna give you the most out of EV and gas. Pedal down. And we got up over 60, and it definitely makes quite a bit of noise. I'm gonna get back out of sport mode because that's not what it's all about. I'm gonna to go to economy mode. And it just brought us back to EV mode because we don't really need any power right now, but it just handles well. I'm. You know, the Accord has a balance of fun characteristic to it, especially for this hybrid, you know, considering it's a hybrid, but you also have good ride comfort. It's not quite as comfortable as some cars. The ride is a little more on the firm side, but overall, it's a very comfortable ride. Now I'm gonna turn the lane keeping system on, radar cruise control on. It's not super aggressive around the corner. It's gonna need some help but it does keep you centered in your lane. And I just braked because I took over the wheel, but I just resumed. So it's accelerating on its own here and it lets you know when it recognizes the lanes or when it doesn't. And so far it's not. I don't have a long detailed video with the Accord on its lane keeping system, but it's done a good job. It's not as aggressive as some. The radar cruise control has also done a good job and Honda actually uh, improve that system for 
less jerkiness and more responsiveness compared to prior years. If I veer over, it's gonna pull me back. And when I turned the wheel, it kind of kicked off the lane keeping system. But I have videos showing that system in other type of vehicles. Uh, if you wanna see that in the description below, you can find those. Now I'm gonna put us in EV mode. So you have a dedicated EV mode to where it'll go into EV mode on its own sometimes. And I'm gonna use the paddles to brake. I'm not touching the brake. It's slowing me down, it's capturing energy. But dedicated EV mode, the car will do its best to use just electric power to an extent. You don't have a whole lot of range in EV mode like a plug-in hybrid but you can get by using some even up to higher speeds but if you get on the accelerator like if you have to get out of the way of somebody or get going it will just automatically turn the gas engine on up to a certain point but I can accelerate oh somebody just came up behind me so I gotta get going and it turns EV mode off turns the engine on but once we get up to speed I'm gonna turn EV mode back on. All right, EV mode is on, and as long as you don't really hammer on that accelerator or you don't run out of battery power, it's gonna keep me in EV mode. So I can maintain a 50 mile per hour speed here in just EV mode, not using any gas at all. And you can always go out of EV mode if you want to. But here's the thing, my biggest complaint right now with the Accord is the road noise by far the road noise is intrusive it's worse than it should be it's worse than others in this class and it's not horrible you know they the older vehicles are usually worse but it should be better especially considering this touring model it does have active noise cancellation um, which supposedly probably helps a little bit but and by the way, we're still in EV mode. We've got a couple of cyclists up here, so we're all going slow. And that's gonna help us get uh, better efficiency. <laughs> but we're at about 39.9 miles per gallon right now with some times of flooring it. And if I hadn't floored it a couple of those times, we'd probably be more so like 45 miles per gallon or so. So not too bad at all. Still in EV mode. I can just cruise around this neighborhood here in EV mode, not using any gas whatsoever kind of like a plug-in hybrid and it's basically just like an electric car in this state and usually there's a couple notches on the power meter once you get to the second notch usually it'll just automatically turn on the gas so that's kind of the threshold but Toyota's hybrid system I believe once you get to like 23 or 25 miles an hour it just turns the gas on if you're in dedicated EV mode but this can go faster than that you can get up to highway speeds and maintain that so I love that Honda does that. But my really my only complaint about driving this is the road noise. So if that's a problem for you, then that stinks. You know, it's not terrible on the interstate. There's not a lot of wind noise. You actually have laminated glass over here. It's just the rough textured road surfaces. And I'm sure the tires and 19 inch wheels on here make a difference, but it's just something you'll have to see if it's too much for you, drive it yourself. But let's go ahead and wrap things up. I like driving this Accord, the hybrid. We just finished with that little jaunt of EV mode at 44.1 miles per gallon. Whoops, I just smacked that on the window. But So to wrap things up on this 2021 Honda Accord, I like what Honda has done. They've kept it practical, they've kept it spacious and efficient, and it's still got a good amount of features, but if you move down in trim level away from this Touring model with the hybrid, you'll get quite a bit more efficiency. This top end Accord Touring doesn't quite offer all of the features that you might expect in this type of vehicle compared to some competitors, but it's got a lot. And like I said, it's just a very well-rounded package, spacious, practical, efficient, and it just drives really nice too. But I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. If you wanna see the non-hybrid model, I've got a few of those videos in the description below. So be sure to check those out. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be super helpful. Subscribe if you wanna see more, and we'll catch you next time.